Over to you guys. Can you do a, a little bit of a brief introduction as to the challenges, a bit about yourself, and the challenges that you're facing in juggling the, the task of home and work? Steve, over to you. Yeah, sure. Um, good to see some dads out there. Dads? <laughs> Brilliant. Excellent. Good for us. And uh, good to see another dad as well. So, I mean, I mean, first off, just by way of an introduction, then, I, mean, I am here to learn as much as I am to share. I think like, everybody feels that way, because hands up who thinks they're really getting this right. Excellent, so I'm not <laughs> alone. And that's kind of a massive part of this. I think there's so much that's un that can stay inside and unsaid about guilt. I mean, guilt kind of in here is kind of a massive, massive word. And I think when I, when I think about being a parent, there's kind of two parts of that. There's one being a dad, but there's also, in my case, being a husband as well. And managing those three those two things I'm doing in one particular way which is also trying to be a really good son um, and I, I, I want to develop really great relationships with my kids how do, how, how do I do this what is the thing that I'm not doing right so far and I realized one of the things I'm not doing is role modeling how I, I'd like them to be with me because I was thinking just what is my attitude to my folks I'm lucky enough they're both still alive they're, they're divorced but very happily uh, friends so still got a holiday together, kind of weird, but it works. <laughs> um, and, and so I made a decision, particularly when I came into this new job, and that's a thing to talk about as well, which is what happens when you come up, what happens when you change, uh, change jobs, because that can totally overwhelm, and certainly had a kind of couple of weeks of that. So I made a decision that's what, what are the things I really wanted to change? I think it is about setting out the things that you want to change rather than being uh, taken by the circumstances of the job, that I wanted to be a better son. And then being a better son, then that would help me be a better parent because I would demonstrate to my kids what it was that I would like them to be with me. And that's how we've got a relationship. So that was one of the goals I set up. The other thing, and I think it's really, there, there's, there, there, there's a lot of words around this of guilt and coping and difficulty and struggling. And just from a, from a management point of view, I love working with parents for one reason, because they know why they're coming to work. And it's, it's often unsaid just how unbelievably motivating it is. That moment when somebody comes into the world that you have a responsibility of that's beyond you. And I remember really clearly my first day back at work after paternity leave for uh, Fred is, you know, 10 years ago. And it was a really, really incredible moment because it was like, okay, great. Well, I know why I'm here. I mean, up until now, I've been coming into work because then I can go out on a piss and have a really good time. But now, I've got to take care of you and I've got to take care of you. And that drive, that momentum, and that focus that it can bring to a career, I think is often under, undervalued and under-recognized. So that's the thing that I encourage when I talk to my team, which is when, they, when, when somebody's joyous about the fact that, that somebody's uh, about to become a parent, well, then you know you're really, if you get it right, you manage it in the right way, you're really going to hit a fantastic career trajectory as well. So celebrate the positive and role model how you want your children to behave with you would be something I am uh, attempting to do. Not quite there yet, but attempting to do. Amazing. Thank you. Well, I've heard Steve speak about this before, and I could sit and listen to him all morning speak about it, because I think that Steve kind of embodies... Um, the superpower that parents have, and there's a funny thing that happens when you become a parent. So often, it um, you know, it should be the thing that really enhances your career, your skills, your confidence, all of these things. But so often, it's exactly the opposite. And actually, being a parent is a superpower for a lot of the reasons that Steve's mentioned. And I think, yeah, you do it, you clearly do it really, really well. So I'm going to learn a lot of of you today. Um, the reason that I wanted to be involved with this was. Also because I passionately believe that everybody should have the opportunity to fulfill their potential. And in the times of change, it's very, very easy to kind of to lose that focus on fulfilling your potential, no matter what that is. And you get kind of a complicated life when you become a parent and a working parent, and you just have so many additional challenges. So it's kind of balancing all of those. And as you know, sort of, as it says in the little book, Chris and Nassib was saying, guilt is a huge thing. And there was somebody that I remember meeting, but it, 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 I wish I'd met her before I'd had children. But it's Heather McGregor, and she's written Career Advice for Ambitious Women. Um, but, you know, men should read it too. It's, it's a you know, great book. She's, you know, she's polarising, but there's some good advice in there. 
and she talked about um, you know not feeling guilty uh, about not feeling guilty, which is something I've been doing for a long time. And so what she did was kind of go, right, I've got kids, they're cost centres one and two. And I was like, oh, really? Oh my goodness. And I was like, actually, no, that kind of, that works for me in a way. Because the things, and she talked about putting your, putting your life into priorities. And her priority was work. And then it was her kids. And then it was her husband. And then it was her. And I kind of went, that really makes sense for me. And that stopped, that was that moment that actually I stopped feeling so guilty and I was able to kind of, you know, work a few extra hours at work because I wanted to achieve stuff for me because that actually helped feed the stuff that was important for me and actually made me a better mother for the time when I'm with my kids. So I think the guilt thing is, is you know, is enormous and kind of, and being really honest with yourself about it. Um, I guess the sort of the, the, the three, there's kind of like three buzzwords that I kind of, I was watching a TED talk last night by um, Michelle Obama, and she obviously passionately believes in um, working parents and as working parents as role models. And the things that she sort of pulled out in the speech were around um, confidence, perseverance, because it's different in every organization you're in every day, <laughs> every moment, every meeting you step into, you have a whole load of different stuff going on. So perseverance is really, really key. And then being, being the right role model and finding the right role models around you. Okay. <laughs> um, so as Pete said, I'm Vicky um, and I've just returned from a year's maternity leave. Um, I came back in July this year. Um, and I was lucky enough to be able to negotiate flexible working <clears throat> with my employer when I returned. So I did three days a week for the first 12 weeks and now I'm doing four days a week. Um, so I think it's just helpful to kind of talk also about the fact that it is possible to have those conversations. I think um, that's essentially why I'm here today is because I'm a huge advocate of the NAVS Working Parents Programme. Um, I was lucky enough to attend some of the workshops before I returned to work, which really helped me to plan out how I was going to handle working in our industry and to be a parent. Um, in particular, I think it's <clears throat> about access to information. I don't think that in our industry, enough is talked about in terms of flexible working. It's not like friends of mine who have worked in, say, public sector, or they're a teacher or something like that, where they just negotiate three days and then they just go back to work. You know, our industry is, is very different. And so I think, you know, to echo uh, some of the points we've already had, and I think we'll see some recurring themes come through today, is for me it's about being brave, um, kind of asking those difficult questions, but also from a personal point of view, challenging perceptions, um, and actually driving forward uh, flexible working and kind of making it work for us in our industry. And in particular then, making sure that it becomes more acceptable and not something that we should kind of be slinking out of the office and kind of feeling ashamed about the fact that we need to go home because we've got families. And when I was thinking about the talk today, I thought about how I felt in my mid-twenties when you know, I, was, I was rapidly heading towards 30, thinking about having a family and thinking how I was ever going to, to do it all. Um, and I think the good thing is that today, it's more acceptable that we won't be able to do it all. I think you know, we need to draw upon the tools that we have around us to, <clears throat> to draw on people and, and, and use our support networks. And so really, I think, um, you know, we can acknowledge that, but also, I thought, I read an interesting quote that was saying that there is no secret. Um, you kind of look around and think that everybody else has cracked it. Um, and actually, that you know, there's um, a quote in Sheryl Sandberg's book, so in Lean In, uh, the psychologist Mary Curtis says that, you know, there is no secret that everybody else is just doing the best they can with the tools that they've got. And I think it's really true. You kind of look around and think, oh my God, look at all of these people, you know, they've really cracked it. Um, and, you know, they're just, they're just essentially doing, you know, doing the best that they can too. Um, as part of the programme, I uh, attended a session with a one-to-one -one coaching, uh, a one-to-one -one coach, and I also went to the uh, wellbeing workshop. And there were two key things that I took out of those sessions, um, which really helped me when thinking about um, how I would frame myself as a working parent in our industry. And for me, those two things are managing relationships, so whether that's having a good relationship with your childcare provider, um, managing your relationships at work, so thinking about your boss and thinking about your team and how you're going to handle those relationships, being up front with people. Um, but also your partner um, and thinking about how you can really work together to make things work. So having you know, a 50-50 relationship, so the responsibility for, you know, for me at nursery right now is who's doing the pick up, who's doing the drop off, who's doing this, who's got a meeting. 
you know, we have those conversations every day, and it changes every day, as much as I tried to put it on the spreadsheet, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then again, it, it, the, the second thing was about awareness of self. Um, so for that, it was about green rules, um, which we talked about in the wellbeing workshop. So thinking about yourself in terms of output, not just feeling like you've got to be in the office drilling away the hours, thinking about how to be most productive around your time. Um, challenging perception, so looking for evidence. If, um, if you're walking away from your desk at five o'clock because you have to go, you're thinking everybody's judging you, then ask yourself where the evidence is. You know, are people actually looking at you and judging you for going? Probably not. You know, does anyone come up to you and say, oh, shame on you for going home at five o'clock? Yeah, they don't care. As long as you're getting your work done um, and being confident about it. Um, and finally, I've put organised, but as I just said to Karen, like the reality of all the spreadsheets I put together for budgets, for food, for our schedules didn't actually come together. So I'd say that's one I'm still working on. And I think that's a key thing as well that we've talked about already, is that everybody's still working on it. I think you know sometimes it all comes together and it works well, but for me there are days when I'm still ironing my dress, James is in his cot drinking his milk, watching Peppa Pig. Um, and that's not the vision I had as a parent when I, when I set out uh, to do this. So I think, you know, I'm still working at it and I'm still getting there and there. Thank you. I think that's brilliant. I think um, my journey here this morning is a typical example of how it's not perfect and nobody's cracked it. Um, I have a four-year-old who just started reception a couple of weeks ago and an 8.45 start, knowing I've got that 8.45 start, it was in the car, out the door, out the room, gone over the bridge, get here. It was literally, it was literally me being uh, a hundred meter sprinter trying to get here this morning. So it is not perfect and it does change all the time. Um, and the reason why I wanted to get involved is because I think it's really, really important for people to have honest conversations and to tell the truth and be able to say what works for them and what doesn't work for them because everybody's blend is different. So what happens in everybody's household is completely different. So in 2008, um, I was um, Chief Operation Officer of EMEA. I had met the man of my dreams. I had got engaged. I was pregnant, expecting my first child. Uh, horrified to be told that I was a geriatric mum at 38 when I was going down to my hospital appointments. And uh, uh, I had it all. I was looking forward to our life together and starting this family. And by the time my son was born at the end of 2009, um, I hadn't met the man of my dreams. I was going to do it alone and I was doing a very, very, very um, heavy workload job which involved me flying around Europe, the Middle East and Africa uh, with a newborn baby to come back to. So I took six months off. Um, I still sort of kept in touch with work, making decisions about what was going on in Italy. God only knows what decisions I made, because I barely, <laughs> barely knew my own name. Um, and sort of came back to work after six months, uh, worked for a further six months, and then became CEO of Medicom in the UK. So I got promoted with a six-month-old baby. Big job, five offices, 965 people, 200 clients, and just me uh, looking after my son. So it did mean that I had to look at what my blend is and what is important, and I wanted to be a good mum. I wanted to be a good role model for my son Isaac, but I also really enjoyed my career, and I, it was a privilege to be given the CEO role at Medicom, and I didn't want to cop that up either. But I knew it was really important to be honest about how I struggle with balancing and trying to blend my work persona and my home persona. And the thing is, is it about being authentic because you can't be one person in work and another person out of work. So I do bring myself to work. I do talk about Isaac because it's an important part of my life. And I do know that there are some people that don't do that. They feel as though they can't talk about their children that you have to have some way of showing that you're a fantastic career-focused woman and you can't talk about your family, and I just find that weird. Um, because for me, Isaac is part of my blend and a really important part of my blend. But what I have had to do, and it sort of echoes what the other guys talk about, is set my stall out about what I can and can't do and make sure that my clients know that, 
make sure that people that I work with internally know that. Um, but also, what I think is really important is to ask for help. So that's the biggest lesson for me, being a single parent, is making sure that when I need to, ask for help, because I can't do it all. It's not possible physically or mentally to do it all. So making sure that I am comfortable to ask for help, that I don't feel guilty about asking for help, and also making sure that extends in both work as well as outside work as well. So I have already become best mates with all of the mums that are at school, because I know there might be the odd occasion where I might need either to go on a play date with one of them because I can't physically get there to do a pickup. So it's about making sure that you do put your hand up and ask for help. I do think is really, really important. And that's the main thing that I would sort of say today. Thank you. She's pretty amazing, isn't she? Um, hi everyone, I'm Sam. Um, so I, uh, like some of the other ladies here, uh, consider myself to be a great organiser, a great planner. So actually, when it came to getting married even, I remember my husband and I actually having a conversation about how we were going to handle everything when it came to having kids, etc., which we both wanted. And uh, possibly wonky as this sounds, we decided well, we were going to be team Phillips. It wasn't going to be conventional. I was already one who was earning more money than my husband, um, uh, etc. But kind of as I go on to tell this story, you'll realise that even with, with that brilliant planning, some of which has stayed useful, um, actually all the best laid plans can just be ripped asunder. So I think I've been invited here as an example of extreme working parenting. Um, and I'm going to explain that now. So um, my other son, uh, Max, is 11. Uh, when he was born, he was born stillborn, and he uh, also uh, had Down syndrome, which we didn't know. Um, that was quite hardcore, to get your head around all of that. And I was planning on going back to be marketing director of IPC after five months, well that didn't happen actually. Anyway, um, and so that was kind of first thing to really consider, because you hadn't had that in your plan. Uh, three months after I had Max, and believe me, first time out, uh, I got pregnant again. Uh, and that was Ted. Okay, so my two boys are 12 months apart. Again, not planned. Um, born was developmentally delayed, therefore effectively I had twins. Well, that was big. I had to really think about what to do then. So I decided to go back to work. <laughs> also, my husband uh, and I had decided, uh, well, I decided I wanted to do this as a teenager, but we agreed on our honeymoon, that come what may, we would adopt a child one day, because I think life is bigger uh, than everything we're doing in this room today, for example. Uh, and I think it's just really important to, to, to put back. So, uh, after four and a half years of the planning, uh, Tallulah came into our lives, adopted from a Russian nursery four years ago. By this stage, my husband and I had decided that uh, we needed to slightly rearrange our, 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 our lives, really, um, and that if I was going to, in a really essential sense, bring in the money, uh, someone needed to bring in the time, so he'd be trained as a teacher. And this goes back to what I was saying at the beginning about Team Phillips. This is, this is a uh, you know, a team affair if you're lucky enough to, to have that and that worked well for a couple of years until my husband was diagnosed with terminal cancer uh, and that is a bit of a blow and you literally sit there how the bloody hell am I going to do this now uh, and that was two years ago uh, and he was told he had four or five months to live he's now a lifestyle and he's still got another couple of years to live but life has changed radically as you can imagine and this is kind of you have to sort of then work out what the stuff you've never planned for it and I'm still here working today, and I'm still here doing a big job today, and I'm still here taking on new responsibilities, but I've had to go through such a uh, journey of understanding myself to get there. And when my husband was hospitalised again over Christmas for three weeks, that was really, really difficult. A, because of all the emotions to do with that and managing the children, but B, because what I found myself in a situation of was being pressurised by all family uh, and quite a few friends about, come on, Sam, now it's time you start working. Come on. Uh, and I had to search every bit of my being to work out whether that was the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. And I fought everyone, actually, apart from eventually my father, who said, you know, I'm quite similar to you, came and said, actually, Sam, I think if I was in your shoes and I was being told to stop work, I think I'd feel like a caged beast. And I said, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at, Dad. So I had to ride that wave. Uh, and I still believe it was the right decision. You have to trust your gut and know what's right here. Actually, my husband was very supportive of this. He doesn't know some of that because actually it would be too difficult to handle. Um, I'm still back at work. I love my job. My job gives me so much energy, freedom, joy. My kids give me so much as well. But for me, personally, I know I would be frustrated just being at home. 
and just being the caregiver. And I think you have to know what's in your essence. Uh, and I forgave myself for all of this, which might sound quite hard to some of you. About four years ago, I'm lucky enough to be sent an Omnicom's senior leadership program uh, with Harvard professors over in America. Uh, and this one professor, a lady called Nancy Cohen, said this, and it stuck with me. And it's, I think it's amazing. She said, you know all this stuff you hear about work-life balance? Forget it. You have one life. And for me, that was the most profound thing. And after that, I thought, yeah. So I have, you know, to Karen's by the blended, I've merged my life, my life now, yeah? Uh, I do home stuff at work. I do work stuff at home. I talk openly about it. I'm not ashamed of it. And it makes me, I think, a better employer, employee, and employer probably, uh, and a better mother. Um, that's me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Liz. Amazing stories and some very humbling stories, so um, thank you for that. Um,